When people think of physical health, there's many components that will immediately come to mind. A lot of them are probably ability-based. Strength, speed, endurance, stuff like that. Then we can go a level below that and look at health of certain parts of the body. The brain, the heart, the integrity of the musculature, all aspects that get a good amount of attention in the fitness and nutrition world. Unfortunately, some fly under the radar comparatively, with possibly the most important one of these being bone health. If you ask someone to build a house, they'll instinctively tell you to start with the foundation. So then, why don't we do the same with our bodies? I mean, our bones are pretty much the structural cornerstone from which everything else is built off. Well, today I want to highlight a nutrient that does just that. One that's basically synonymous with bone health. One that we all know we need, whose consumption still comes up short an alarming amount of the time. It's time to take another look at the true nutrients. So calcium. We know it, we love it, or at least milk advertisers do, but more importantly, our bodies do. Calcium is the most abundant mineral in the body. Though the body cannot produce it on its own, thus its consumption is crucial for the body to perform at its best. Calcium was first isolated in 1808 in England by the familiar chemist Humphrey Davy. It's also one of the micronutrients whose amount is mandated to be on a standard nutrition label, due to the more recent evidence of the general population not consuming enough of it. Calcium falls into a subcategory known as electric electrolytes, particles that carry a charge. Calcium in particular carries a positive charge. More than 99% of calcium is stored in the bones, and calcium stored in bones is mainly in the form of hydroxyapatite. When calcium levels get too low, the parathyroid hormone will signal the bones to release calcium into the bloodstream. This hormone also has kidneys rid of less calcium via urine, and possibly most importantly, this hormone also activates vitamin D to improve absorption of calcium. Without vitamin D, calcium absorption is rather inefficient hovering at around a 10 to 15% absorption rate. While with sufficient vitamin D, that rate increases to nearly 40%. When enough calcium has been attained, another hormone called calcitocin does the opposite, lowering the calcium levels in the bloodstream. So that's just a brief rundown of calcium as a nutrient, now let's go ahead and take a look at what it does. There's no point in beating around the bush, the main benefit calcium provides is its contributions to the health of your bones and teeth. Bones are living tissue with cells that are constantly being broken down and built up in a process called remodeling. This is done by special cells called osteoblasts and osteoclasts that build up and break down bone tissue respectively. It's estimated to take about 10 years for a skeleton to fully renew itself. These processes function in relative balance until about the age of 30 to 35, which is when the breaking down becomes more prominent. Eventually, this can lead to osteopenia and then osteoporosis, which is a chronic disease where bone mineral density and bone mass are depleted past a certain point, leaving bones frail and more susceptible to injury. According to the CDC, in adults age 50 or over, an estimated 13% have osteoporosis in their hips or spine, with that average being driven up significantly by women who average closer to 20%. This is because later in life, women experience this bone loss at a far greater rate. Now what role does calcium play in all this? Well, bones are partially made up of calcium compounds, notably calcium phosphate, a combination of calcium and phosphorus, the other mineral most associated with bone health. These compounds provide structure and hardness to bones, giving the osteoblast something to work with. Now the go-to analogy for what calcium is to your bones is to think of calcium and phosphorus, as well as vitamin D, as the brick and mortar of the foundation that is your bones. And past a certain age, this will become a losing battle, thus calcium becomes one of the most important nutrients to consume sufficient amounts of, especially the older you get. But calcium's functions don't stop its structure of bones, though that is realistically the main one. Calcium is also used for muscular contraction, heart function, and blood clotting. Muscularly, calcium is released when a muscle is stimulated, basically triggering the contraction to happen in the first place. When it comes to your heart, calcium helps maintain it by relaxing smooth muscles around blood vessels. Proper calcium intake is also shown to lower blood pressure. And for blood clotting, calcium initiates the release of platelets and other clotting agents to get the process started. Calcium also participates in a lot of other bodily functions, too many to realistically explain in a video like this, but the point is, there's a reason it's the most advertised and promoted to consume mineral out there. Its importance cannot be overstated. The standard recommendation for adults is 1,000 milligrams, a pretty easy number to remember. The recommendations are a bit higher, between 1,200 and 1,300 milligrams for children in their pubescent years, older adults, and women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. These individuals have a higher demand due to their rate of development, their rate of decline, or the fact that they are physically providing for another being. But other than that, with really only one caveat, calcium continues to be a pretty straightforward nutrient. That caveat being the straight-up terrible absorption rate I mentioned 
mentioned earlier. Again, calcium is naturally only absorbed by your intestines at about a 10 to 15% rate, 20 at the very highest. This is fixed by vitamin D, which acts as a hormone that signals for the gut to absorb more, again to upwards of 40%. So that begs the question, which is more essential, calcium or vitamin D? Let's just go with both, shall we? Vitamin D recommendations vary a bit, but that'll get its own video one day. Now I will say, unlike many other nutrients, unless you make an active effort to include calcium in your day-to-day -day diet, you will probably come up short and you will probably suffer for it. It's just not as easy to find a nutrient as many others. Now too little calcium is called hypocalcemia. Over 25% of people are estimated to have hypocalcemia, usually due to a direct calcium or vitamin D deficiency, but occasionally there are other underlying reasons. Calcium deficiency most commonly commonly contributes to osteoporosis and osteopenia, the stage before osteoporosis. However, there are many other things that can factor into your risk for this as well. These include your phosphorus and vitamin D consumption, your smoking and alcohol habits, and your fitness and resistance training regimen. Other symptoms of hypocalcemia include muscle cramps and spasms, worsened memory, numbness, trouble sleeping, anxiety, and depression. And there are trends that show that children who don't consume enough calcium will have their growth and development stunted, particularly their height. Now on the other end, too much calcium is called hypercalcemia. It affects less than 1% of the population and is generally more of a medical issue and less of a nutritional one. If you have concerns regarding any of this, talk to your doctor, have them take a blood sample to view your blood mineral levels, and go from there. And as I often do, the last thing I want to talk about is sources of calcium. Now, calcium is really the first nutrient I've covered in depth that I would consider to be difficult to find and consume. There are very few reliable sources, and even those come with the caveats of often poor absorption rates and other more individual issues when overconsumed. For example, when looking at plant-based sources, many of the most calcium-dense foods are quite highly caloric, like seeds and nuts. And many of the lower calorie sources, like soybeans, arugula, and spinach, aren't exactly the kind of foods most most people are excited to have substantial amounts of on a regular basis. Many plant foods are fortified with calcium due to the push for more people to consume it. For example, many plant milks, many grain products specifically made from flour or cornmeal, and certain fruit juices are often fortified, though this is far from guaranteed. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but what I will say is that this can be one of the potential pitfalls of a plant-based diet. And if you're on one, keep an eye on your blood mineral levels, and don't be surprised if you end up being recommended some kind of calcium supplement. Now, opening the door up to animal foods doesn't expand the list very much, but there are some more reliable sources that you'd probably be a little more eager to consume more often. The main reason for that being the access to dairy. Milk naturally contains calcium, thus any dairy product that is not highly processed will be a more reliable source. The problem with this is that not everyone handles dairy perfectly, with lactose intolerance among a few other minor conditions being quite common. So besides dairy, the best place to look is the sea. Most seafood options will contain at least a relevant amount of calcium, with a special mention going to small fatty fish like sardines and anchovies. And unless I'm missing something, that's really it. As I've been repeating throughout the video, calcium is really not an easy nutrient, and I believe the push for it to be more visible, accessible, and advertised is generally more than valid. It's important to remember that not everything with nutrition has to be complicated, but not everything gets to be so simple either. Calcium is a good example of both. Conceptually, it's very straightforward. Consume it, get some sun, and your bones will thank you for it later. Its execution, however, is a bit more complicated, as the result of its failure will affect the majority of people at some point. If you're going to take care of your body, make sure you do so to all of it, especially its foundations. Now, if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe, as I've got plenty more of these on the way. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments what other nutrients you think deserve an entire in-depth breakdown video like this. And remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your body. You only get the one.